వెల్కమ్ టు ఈ పీజీ పాఠశాల ఐఎమ్ కె రాజన్ ఫ్రమ్ ద డిపార్ట్మెంట్ ఆఫ్ హిస్టరీ పాండిచ్చేరి యూనివర్సిటీ ద సబ్జెక్ట్ టుడే వీఆర్ డీలింగ్ ఈజ్ ఇండియన్ కల్చర్ అండ్ ద పేపర్ ఈజ్ ఆన్ ఇండియన్ ఆర్కిటెక్చర్ ద మాడ్యూల్ ఈజ్ ద స్ట్రక్చరల్ టెంపుల్స్ ఆఫ్ ద చోలాస్ ద చోలాస్ హూ కేమ్ టు ద పవర్ in 9th century ad after the downfall of or after weakening the pallavas and pandyas in south india after becoming a power in south india or in tamil nadu particularly in the kaveri delta region they extended their power in the south and also in the north they brought under the control of the total bigger geographical zones what we popularly call northern tamil nadu the tondai mandalam the central part of tamil nadu the chola mandalam and the southern part of tamil nadu that is called pandya mandalam and the kerala region that is our what they call malai mandalam all these four uh, mandalams have brought under the control of uh, cholas and again they brought the neighboring regions of karnataka ruled by the rashtrakutas and also the andhra pradesh and sri lanka so that way their sway has been extended their rule has been extended even in the later period up to ganges uh, by through raja rajendra first who invaded up to ganges but nothing has come under the direct administrative control of the cholas it is only they invaded and they make them to pay the tribute the four mandalams what we are tamil nadu and kerala has really brought under the administrative control of the cholas that way the majority of the chola temples could be seen in this administrative controlled zones so the main objective of this uh, indian architecture particularly the chola architecture is to know about the introduction of Uh, structural temples they don't have any rocket cave temples or monolithic temples the cholas having only the structural temples that has the legacy that got from the pandyas and pallavas and uh, to understand the plan and elevation which reached a pinnacle or perfection during the time of cholas involved total in the construction of the structural temples to understand what is their contribution in the temple architectural evolution that also we could see as one of the objectives then to estimate their impact in the su- subsequent uh, dynasties like uh, vijayanagar or hoysalas or any other, any other minor dynasties that also we will take into account with uh, the cholas uh, who removed the power of pallavas in the north and also the power of the pandyas in the south around in the middle of 9th century ad they established a big kingdom with a capital city at tanjavur so there were two cholas one is sangamech cholas they have ruled from 3rd century bc to 3rd century ad then after that with these cholas called as imperial cholas or later cholas and for about 5 centuries a large part of tamil nadu Uh, besides peripheral regions in adjoining areas in andhra pradesh karnataka and kerala were under their rule which they studded with hundreds of temples as i told you it is the region which is came under the administrative control of the cholas we are having the temples in plenty so on the basis of certain accepted notions regarding the evolution of temple architecture and on the authority of numerous inscription it is easily one can identify the chola temples unlike the pallavas in the pallavas has constructed several temples and pandyas also constructed several temples we don't have the foundation inscriptions in most of the temples but in the case of cholas we are having the foundation inscription it becomes very easy for a historian or an archaeologist to identify the the construct who has constructed first these that these temples
So, uh, based on that inscriptional evidence, and uh, we could able to identify the temples, and also based on the chronological framework, we can able to differentiate the temples in three phases or in three groups. Though the periodization of South Indian art history is even now a subject of debate, it is considered by most of the caste scholars that Chola temples are broadly divisible into three groups. The first group belonging to the period from Vijayalaya first to the Rajaraja king first, ruling between the 850 to 985 AD. The second group, that means with the Rajaraja com first coming to the power, we are com entered into the second group that up to the close, this group of construction goes up to the Klothunga first, that is between 985 AD to 1070 AD. The third group, aware that power of the Cholas going down. So at that time, we are having a different type of uh, structural temples also emerging, that is from Klothunga first uh, going up to the Klothunga third. So that way, in the initially, this is the foundation rulers, and the second group is that uh, the full power, and the third one, that was the Vanningim power. So, we could able to see there are several early Chola temples like at Kilayur, Srinivasanallur, Kumbhakonam, Yerumbur, and Pullamangai, and uh, Punjai, and Kudumbalur. And besides, also, we are having number of temples that is later Chola temples, what we call it, Bragadishwara temple at Tanjavur, again Bragadishwara temple at Gangaikunta Cholavaram, and Tiruvanji, and also Melpadi, Tiruvalanjuri, Tirumalavadi, so Tiruvarangulam, and also Dadavaram. There are several places we are having this later Chola temples. So this, when we compare with the early Chola architecture, what we have in the first phase, generally speaking, Temples built under Aditya and Prandaka first is considered as the early Chola temples. Can these uh, rulers who constructed several temples and these temples contain only three niches in the shrine walls, one on each wall and one two niches in the walls of the Ardhamandava, again one on each wall. So, while the niches in the southern and northern walls of the Ardhamandava carried respectively the carvings of Ganesha and Durga, those of the main shrine were intended for Dakshina Murti and Brahma. So, the Dakshina Murti sculpture on the southern side became an important feature in the latter day uh, temple architecture, what popularly called Guru Bhagavan. The niche in the rear wall affords scope for variation of the ancient deity, either Lingodbhava or Vishnu or Harihara or Ardhanarishwara. So, that way, certain uh, deities are uh, taking a place within the temple complex. So the early Chola temples are of simple in nature, having a Vimana and Ardhamandava. So, it is a temple having a small Garbhagaraka, in front you are having a small Ardhamandava. And in few cases, an entourage of Ashta Parivalayas, that means we are having a small, small miniature temples all around the main temple, that what we call Ashta Parivaralayas. So, these Parivaralayas are an important feature in the early Chola architecture. The eight, eight sub shrines dedicated to the ancillary deities or smaller de deities are located on the corners of the sides of the Prahara wall. So, the Prahara wall will be having eight deities. Some of the temples with Ashta Parivaralayas are the Sundareswara temple at Tirukattalai and Nangavara. The whole complex is often surrounded by a Prahara with a small gobra at the main entrance, what we call it principal entrance. The concept of providing the pravahara with a small dwara, small entrance, opening at the principal entrance is already noticed in the Sore Temple at Mamallapuram 
அண்ட் த கைலாசாதன் டெம் டெம்பிள் அட் காஞ்சிபுரம் ஈவன் அட் வைகுந்த பெருமாள் டெம்பிள் அட் காஞ்சிபுரம் ஸோ தட் வே த இன்ட்ரடக்ஷன் ஆஃப் திஸ் கோபுரா பை த பல்லவாஸ் இஸ் ஃபர்தர் இன்லார்ஜ்டு பை த சோலாஸ் ஸோ த ஏர்லி டெம்பிள்ஸ் ஆர் யூஸ்வலி ஆஃப் ஏகத்தல விமானம் டைப் அல் ஆல்தோ த திவித்தல அண்ட் திரித்தல தட் மீன்ஸ் டூ ஸ்டோரிஸ் அண்ட் த்ரீ ஸ்டோரி விமானாஸ் ஆர் டோட்டலி நாட் அன்னோன் இட் இஸ் ஆல்சோ அவைலபிள் இன் ஜென்ரல் த ஏகதல விமானா ஹாவ் போத் த விரிட்ட சிகரா தட் மீன்ஸ் த ஓப்பனிங் சிகராஸ் ஏஸ் ஒன் அப்சார்வ் இன் த பாலசுப்பிரமணியா டெம்பிள் அட் கண்ணனூர் அண்ட் ஸ்கொயர் வாட் வி கால் பிரம்ம கண்டா இ சிகரா இஸ் நோட்டீஸ்ட் இன் த சிவா டெம்பிள் அட் பனங்குடி and yanadi and and also at permal temple at kannanur the dvitala and tritala vimanas usually have the square sigara that is brahmakantas for instance we got at koranganada temple at sinivasanallur near tiruchi the plan of the vimana is generally generally square in plan the square vimana of the koranganada temple at sinivasanallur has the appearance of being a double storied on account of a cornice at the middle of the height literally speaking they introduce the cornice at the middle of the vimana making that vimana as a dvitala vimana so when, but the earliest structural temples of the cholas is considered as a vijayalaya soleeshwaram because it got the name of the first chola king vijayalaya but literally speaking this temple has not been constructed by the vijayalaya but it is a it may be probably their subordinate or they are having some relation with the uh, muttarayar family the temple vijayalaya soleeshwaram is a marvelous piece of art built by muttarayar chief the called ilangu adi arayan this is inferred from an inscription under one of the dwarapalagas where we are having the inscriptions engraved the inscription says that the temple was originally built by one shembudi also called ilango adi arayan and that is suffered damage by heavy rains and was repaired by one mallan viduman also called uh, tamil adi arayan so the temple obtained its present name after vijayalaya chola the founder of imperial chola king so around the second half of the 9th century ad this name was referred to for the first time in a 13th century maravaruman sundara pandya inscription and it has survived obscuring the fact that the temple was erected by the muttarayars as far as the dating of the builder Ilango Adi Arayan is considered there are two opinions some of the opinion that he belonged to the time of the king the Pallava king Nandivarman II and another opinion is that no he is a contemporary to the Chola king Vijayalaya I so anyway this uh, Vijayaleshwaram temple is belongs to the Muttarayar family however it is considered as one of the early chola temple of that time this is an interesting uh, temple constructed in vesarad style with ashta parivaras already as we told that we are having eight shrines around the temple in the early chola architecture that eight shrines are found in this temple within the prakara wall the west facing shrine this temple would have been at the center of a large courtyard and surrounded by the eight subsurrain within the courtyard the courtyard is almost uh, now fallen it is damaged these subsurrains are in various stages of ruin the complex is surrounded by a prahara the door to the shrain is on the west has a pleasing floral design and is guarded by a pair of two armed dwarapalagas under which we got the inscription one arm of the dwarapalaka is resting on a club and the other held out in the vismaya pose or vismaya posture and with the legs crossed 
accepting these door keepers figures are uh, unportraits are only the in the upper terraces the main temple stand on the lotus base we are double lotus base with walls running around the shantam shantoram and also ardha mandapam these are embedded with elegant plasters and pillars and palagai are all stone planks so this is the view of the vijayalaya solishwaram built up on the rocky surface close to the present narthamalai so the ancient name of this narthamalai is nagarathar malai you could see here this west facing uh, temple uh, having a ashta parivara devadas or ashta parivara alayas or eight sub shrines all around this main shrine and you could see the prakara wall almost in a ruin condition the covered artha mandapam stands on six pillars that are square at the top and bottom but octagonal in the middle yes we have seen in the pallava uh, uh, pillars these monolithic pillars are crowned with the bracket capitals over the plasters and palagai that means the plank and the corbels is carved roll carnies with its chaitya arches and decorated with kudus and containing figures of human heads within the kudu and animals sometimes and sur- surmounted by a funnel it is th- uh, three foliated and there are usual rows of budaganas the garbhagraha or shantam santorium is circular and enclosed within a square wall so around the circular inner wall and the outer square wall there are a passage that what we call it as a circumambulatory passage or pradakshana pada so this you can see the west facing vijayalaya solishwaram you could see that entrance at the front and you are having a two dwara palakas on either side of the entrance and above that you are having ara type of uh, thing above the mandapas and very interestingly you could see the vimana it is uh, the uh, tala uh, the, what you are seeing is a square in shape and above that square tala you are having a round tala so the vasara type as well as nagara type are fusion together and they have created a temple so it is an attempt to make the dravada style of temple whether to make it a square or a circular and finally we have square shaped uh, vimanas in later chola temples the vijayalaya solishwaram vimanam is a hollow superstructure uh, this is an uh, it very very important in the later day particularly the bragishwara temple at tanjavur is a hollow superstructure having a uh, tall one when compared with the vijayalaya solishwaram it is made up of four tiers this vijayalaya solishwaram hollow vimana each separated from the next by a cornice the lowest is a rectangular and built over the ardha mandapa and the garbhagraha the rest are over the garbhagraha only on every tier under and over the roll of cornice are rows of you are gavi ganas or vyali vyalavaris or apsaras or another gods the first two tiers have broad parapet walls running over the mandapa they are topped by domical cell like roofs so this is uh, sinivasa nallur temple or what we call koranganada temple at sinivasa nallur you could see the vimana they have shown intentionally that cornice that making a dvitala vimana life of architecture so this is another attempt by the pallava by the cholas are making the vimana square in shape and going uh, in elevation and this is uh, a perfect temple of both the type found at melapalavur uh, near tanjavur or on the banks of the kollidam river and you can see that uh, there are two types of temples were available the vimanas and the shikara at the top one is square 
and another one is a circular so the first picture on the left is circular in shape the griva also circular in shape it is properly we call it as a vasra type and the second one on the right is a na usual dravada style of temple architecture on the corners also on the left side picture you can see that you are having a corners the nandi so it is indicates that it's a shiva temple so that way it has been standardized during the attempted in a circular vimana and also the square vimana and also the octagonal vimana again all these have become they have standardized and they have only have done the square vimana in the later days the temple construction of the later cholas reached its climax during the time of rajaraja first and his immediate successors so something like clothunga first and rajendra first the bragadeshwara temple at tanjavur closely followed by the bragadeshwara temple at gangavanda cholavaram and the aireswara temple at dharasuram mark the pinnacle of the southern vimana architecture the vimana of the bragadeshwara temple at tanjavur and gangavanda cholavaram and also at dharasuram it is a final picture of the vimana in south india or particularly in tamil nadu after that we could not see such vimana in any of the later dynasties so instead of concentrating on the vimana the vijayanagara rulers are concentrated on the gobras so that's why the significance of the vimana went down and the significance of the gobra went up in the period in the uh, subsequent period so it's the bavavar the chola temple its magnitude and quality of design uh, technique involved in the construction and the embellishment that is the several sculptures noticed in the chola temple stand as a testi- testimony to the structural engineering skill and aesthetic artist of the contemporary world so the bragadeshwara temple uh, constructed in the capital city at tanjavur Uh, this is the most ambitious achievement of the tamil nadu architects it is also known as raja rajeshwara after the builder of the king raja raja first and it combines all the aspects that are best in temple building tradition of the contemporary world the nucleus vimana that is central vimana with its axle and peripheral adjunct is surrounded by a massive inner prakara about 242 meter long in east west side and 122 meter broad in the north south axis with a gobra on the east and three other uh, entrances on the lateral lateral and rear sides there are two gobras in the bragadeshwar temple what the one is called rajarajan tiruvasal the sacred gateway of rajaraja and in front of it that is the first one first gobra when you are entering it is called kerlandagan tiruvasal that probably after the defeat of kerala they would he would have uh, named this gobra as a kerlandagan tiruvasal the outer gobra or outer prakara to which this gobra belongs to is now lost and is replaced by a later rampart the inner prakara encloses a huge rectangular court it is surrounded by the two tiered cloister mandava with dwidala sub shrines at three corners and four cardinal directions constructed just abutting to the inner prakara wall these sub shrines were dedicated to the dikbalas so occupying the exact central of the real half of the rectangular court is the main vimana what we call it as a raja rajeshwara vimana you could see that this is the uh, that gobra at, at constructed at the entrance what we call it as raja rajan tiruvasal so here you could see the huge Uh, two dwarapalakas on either side of the entrance but not at from the base but it has been uh, 
constructed on the high adhisthana so this gobra is still it is uh, lesser in height compared with the later vijayanagara times on the prahara wall you are on the top of the prahara wall you could see the nandi has been kept so that way this is one of the huge prahara wall the the upapita of the raja rajeshwara vimana that is a main vimana measures about 1.8 meter in height so that what they call sometimes the scholar dispute that this raja rajeshwara vimana is built on a high platform so it would be called as madakoi that means a temple constructed over a platform so that way this upapita is having 1.8 meter in height he is surrounded uh, or extended forward as a base of the axillary uh, placed artha mandava so the front front artha mandava also on having the same base and also mukha mandava also having same base so that way the hot total temple complex or the main temple has constructed over a huge platform of 1.8 meter height the vimana is raised to a height about 2.5 meter and is about 27.4 meter square at the top the combined height of the upapita and adhisthana necessitate a provision of an affords a scope for double flight of lateral steps with a landing on the top level of the upapita so the first flight of steps goes up to the upapita again another flight of steps goes to up to the temple and an open asail as an alinda what we call like space around the temple has been given around the adhisthana you can move around the further flight of steps uh, from the level to uh, from the bottom level to the top level of adhisthana itself ends in the structure of a temple so that way we are having uh, a vyala mala or what we get the lion heads was given a uh, as a serial of cool close to the vima pranala and also around the temple so this is you could see the view of the pragadeshwara temple and it is a pyramidal in structure with a projection in front what we call nashika and also it is assumed that earlier the wall in front of the vimana has extended but it could not be completed it is a, we are having a two tier at the bay, at the sand garbagarga level and the bottom you are having uh, a pa- painting we are having in the inner uh, pradakshana pada and also we are having a sculptural panel so the showing completely the natya shastra bharatanatya shastras so that way you can see the from the front view we are having on uh, nandi mandapa it was not belongs to the chola times so it belongs to the later period and uh, if you go to the next uh, uh, temple uh, the level of this temple we are having uh, some other uh, entrance in the sense uh, instead of entering directly into the temple they entered into the temple in the lateral direction so it seems in the initial stage you should not go directly to the garbhagraha but you have to enter in the lateral way so the front uh, elevation is given in the during the time of vijayanagar or during the time of marathas so the garbhagraha accommodates a huge shivalinga with an enormous pita or avadayar the even today if you go and see that the avadayar is the size of the avadayar is is bigger than the size of the entrance so the controversy is there but whether avadayar has been placed first after they have constructed or they have kept a huge block of stone inside and they converted into avadayar that we could not still we don't know there is no evidence for that the total height of the vimana from the base of upapita to the tip of the stupi that is kalasa is about 6 65.80 meters and it stands over a square base of 
about 20 meter side. That means each side will be having 20 meter. The inner prahara has subshrines of the later period such as Ganesha and Karthiya shrine and also Amman shrine. So the Amman shrine has been introduced to the time of Vijayanath times. You could see that there is a flight of states is approaching from the east, from the front. On the front, there is one mandapa like thing that are addition in the later addition, probably during the time of Vijayanagar period. So, the construction was when they have constructed, how long they have taken to construct this temple is a very interesting feature. This huge monument, there we don't have any. Uh, stone in the nearby area, either they have to bring the stones from Trichy, about 50 kilometers west of Tanjavur, or they have to bring close to the Pudukote region, again almost a 50 kilometer southwest of uh, Tanjavur. So, the way they have brought this stone is a huge task. And the construction was inaugurated by the Chola king Rajaraja first in the year uh, 1003 or 1004 what we call 19th regnal year of his rule. According to another inscription, in his 25th regnal year, that means in the year 1009, uh, he had handed over the metal for the for preparing the Kalasha, meant to serve the final of the Vimana. So, what we call Kumpavishek, what they call it. So, after completion of the temple in all respect, then only Kalasa will be installed on the top of the Vimana. So that way, since he has granted or handed over this metal for making a Kalasa, we, they believe that, scholars believe that between the 19th and 25th regal year, this uh, temple would have been completed in the same, with the record time of 6 years, within 6 years, this huge temple has been constructed. Fortunately, the architects, Involved in the construction of this marvelous piece of architecture found mentioned in the inscription engraved on the walls of the temple. The Prahara walls had the name Shanadipadi Krishnan Raman who has constructed the Prahara wall. The chief architect of this temple was Veerasolan Kunjaramallan alias Rajaraja Pirindachan. So, for the first time, even the architect has been recognized by the rulers. But even during the time of Pallavas or in the latter time, we are not getting such recognition of the artisan. That way, Rajaraja, King Rajaraja I is a great scholar. And this one, Sandesha, and you are having uh, temple for a Sandesha, what popularly we call it as a finance officer. So, all the grants will be made in the name of Sandesha. This Sandesha is always facing uh, towards the temple. In this east facing Bragadishwara temple, the Sandesha was facing uh, towards south on, in its, on its northern side. So, after the making a worship, the people have to come down out of this Garbhagraha in the lateral wall also facing this Sandesha temple. So, this is an addition of this Bragishwara temple or Cholas temple. And you could see there is a flight of stairs approaching towards the main temple. But this flight of temple uh, uh, steps are later in date. And during a Rajaraja time, they have to enter on the sideways. The, so, that front mantapa is a later addition. You could see the flight of steps are approaching towards the uh, main temple on the left side as well as there is another flight of steps on the right side. And besides, you are having several uh, Devagostas. The very interesting feature that you could observe in this wall is that besides the Devagosta, we are having a images, a sculptures and that is kept, they made separately and has been kept. And you could see around this Devagosta, you are having a stone pieces. You could see that the stone pieces are still without carving. So some pe uh, stone pieces are kept as it is. It clearly shows they 
constructed this temple first with the stones and after that it ha- the, all the stones have been carved out so that way if the plan they made is one of the greatest one and the down you could see all the vyalavari that is running all around the temple and the on the southern side uh, you are having the dwarapalakas of the andhra when you are coming out of the garbhagraha you are having this entrance or to approach the garbhagraha you are having this entrance on both the side you are having huge dwarapalakas and besides you are have several devagostas you are having you are having several uh, new type of sculptures has been introduced so like uh, harihara this is a lingot bhava and the tripurandaka panel is also found on the top tier this brahmeshwara temple at gangegonda cholavaram is a typical replica of the chanjavur temple but instead of the vertical elevation of the vimana this is little curvature perhaps the elevation is not in proportionate to the base the this was constructed by rajendra first the great son of varthi successor of uh, of rajaraja first this rajendra first after coming to the power and he shifted the capital from tanjavur to gangegonda cholapuram and he established a palace just about a few kilometer west of this gangegonda cholapuram temple and also he constructed a huge tank what we popularly call sola ganga and he constructed the whole town the urban center was fed by this uh, tank then you could see that kangegonda solavaram on the plan on the elevation it almost identical to the bragadeshwara temple at tanjavur except the vimana is having a pyramidal type again but it is having a little curvature so that this temple complex had only two entrances a gobra on the east and a plain gate on the north large part of the enclosure wall the prahara wall at gangegonda solavaram the superstructure of the gobra and the entire two storied cloister mandapa inside were pulled down in the during the colonial times to supply stones for the construction of a neighboring dam so this is the plan of the gangayonda solavaram you could see the santam santoram or garbhagraha on the west on the left side and you are having a hollow vimana at the center you are having a shivalinga with a huge avadaya then you are having a andrala and you are having a two flight of steps on either side on the northern side and the southern side you are having a uh, this flight of step leading to the garbhagraha and you are having maha mandava in the front after that you are having small nandi in further in front of this maha mandava after this maha mandava you are having a jostamba and palipidas and you can see that on the corner of on the south west corner you are having a ganapati shrine and on the north west corner you are having amban shrine and also you are having a line and also well the square vimana and its axle mandavas are standing on a high raised upapita this vimana is also of sandara type that means you are having a circum ambulatory passage and the garbhagraha is enclosed by two walls with a passage in between the walls of the vimana are raised vertically up to two talas and the tapering superstructure of further talas resting on the third tala so that why tapering gives a, a curvature look for this vimana there are totally nine talas all except the first and top talas carrying the hara and of kuta sala and panjara the topmost tala has four nandis placed at the four corners with the griva and sigara is up to from the mids so one of the future of this gangegonda solavaram and also the bragadeshwara temple at tanjavur is the uh, installing a huge sculptures within the devagostas 
the left side you could see there is one of the beautiful sculpture of Saraswati and you are having Agnamada Veda, Akshamala holding and also on the right side you are having Sandesha Anagraha Murthy. What Dr. Nagasami felt that this Sandesha Anagraha Murthy is the Rajendra first himself has become a Sandesha or is, uh, is seated under the legs of the Shiva and the Shiva is garlanding Rajendra first. Is one of the masterpieces of Gangagonda Cholaburam. After that, we are having a several temples. Among them, the Raja Rajeshwara Temple, now called as Airavadeshwara Temple at Dharasuram. This Airavadeshwara Temple, built by Chola King Raja Raja III, and this temple is having a musical steps. That Palibida is having a musical steps that kept in front of it. Seven uh, musical notes will count out of this uh, temple. And secondly, this is considered as a Pallipadai temple. That means this temple has been raised on the immortal remains of the king Raja Raja II. And the, there is another temple called Kambahareshwara temple at Tribunam and built by Chola Klothunga III are the last great temples of the later Cholas with all stone Vimanas that was built before the later Pandyas, supplanted them by the middle of the 13th century. So when you take the look at the structural temples that have started with uh, Kailasanada temple or so temple at Mahavadivaram, and it was extended with the Kailasadam temple at uh, Mahavadivaram, then Vaikundar Pirumal temple at Kanchivaram, all built by Pallavas. And then later on, the Vijayalaya Solishwaram temple at Narthamalai, built by the Mutrayas. And after that, we are having the great uh, Brageshwara temple at Tanjavur. And also, we are having Gangagunda Cholavaram temple at uh, 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 Gangagunda Cholavaram temple. And also we are having other uh, temples like Sinivasanallur and Siddhi Bhuvanam and several places we are having Chola temples. And these uh, structural temples reached its pinnacle and later on the Vijayanagara times they have given importance to the Mandavas, Amman shrine and also for the entrance the Gobras. So that anyway irrespective of all this the contribution of the Cholas to the development of the temple architecture is immense and immeasurable. The contemporary structural temples like Vajayalaya Solishwaram, named after the founder of Imperial Chola Empire, is one of the finest pieces of contemporary Muttarayar dynasty. Likewise, Mover Koil at Kudumbalur is another piece of marvelous architecture of another small dynasty that was called Irkuvel dynasty. So, the spurt of activities in the field of temple architecture amalgamated during the time of later Cholas. Thank you.